Welcome back to the Football Fanatic Podcast, episode 28. We were hanging in there. We were one man short today. Howard is gone, running some errands, so he says. But in his place, we have two very, very reliable men. We have Kieran, and we have Lenny, Andrew Lennon. Gentlemen, how are you? All good, good. Jack. How are you? Pretty good, yeah, pretty good. Lenny, how are you doing? Yeah, very good. Good weekend of football. A great Let's weekend of football. Uh, you had a good night out Saturday night. You were um, in cahoots. We were. We were in yeah. the in the big smoke, and uh, we went to the. Would you believe the Gaelic match in Crow Park, the Dublin and Kerry? Really good match. Yeah. Ah, it was all right. No, it wasn't much of a contest, but uh, there was what, only. What was the attendance like? Ah, it was like thirty six thousand. I think it's pretty good. It was. It was only a, a prelude to the refreshments after the game. Okay, fair enough. Dan, how was your weekend? You were at a wedding. Yeah, it was a rough one on Saturday. Now I was, um, yeah, I would have taken euthanasia to be honest. It was bad, so, uh, uh, I was very sick, but it was great. Yeah, great weekend. Uh, congratulations to Rory and Sarah. Yeah, who tied the knot. So it was good, good, uh, good weekend. It was like a college reunion, but I, I did pay for it on Saturday. Um, yeah, but nothing like a nothing like a bit of Jurgen Klopp Liverpool. They pull you out of the darkness and into the light. And were you, um, what do you call it? Did it, it obviously lifted your spirits yesterday. Were you celebrating with the brothers? Were you watching with the brother? Where were you watching it? Uh, ironically, yeah, I, I was on college online, so I kind of had it on the phone the first half. Um, and I, I got downstairs and for a good bit, uh, no, actually, I was online for until five, but I got kind of a, a break for a half hour, so I got most of the first half, and then I watched to go to the second half on my phone, and then, um, I watched extra time with my brother, yeah, who uh, we've had some great memories, and that was in their own dad to the list. Um, Absolutely. Yeah, well, my, mo- my mother even got in on the act, actually, just uh, she was sitting there and she was asking, What's going on? She's like, Oh, is this the Premier League? She didn't know what the fuck was going on. Okay, asked okay. probably stupid questions. And then uh, in the end, she got up and we had a fucking three way three way huddle and, uh, just, you know, shouting her arms. Great crack. <laughs> really? Good stuff. Good stuff. Um, our mother is very much a Manchester City fan. Um, would you agree, Ken? Um, More out of you know, pity. I, for would, my... I would argue that she is sympathetic to the Manchester United, yeah. Manchester City cause because um, when they win, you're 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 calm, and when they don't win, you you're, you're better than up. years ago. You were a much more um, combustible person. Like that. Yeah, fe- <laughs> I, I I would reach fever pitch. <laughs> um, but yeah, what's he call it? We'll get straight into actually the game from yesterday. Chelsea nil, Liverpool won, so they had to go to extra time or sorry, extra time to get there. But it was actually probably one of the most entertaining nil nil games I've seen in a long, long time. And um, they had actually a nil all game in this. Was it in this cup as well? Two, two, three years ago, and it was another great nil all game. That was the third and a nil in a row in cup finals. It was the uh, between Liverpool and Chelsea. I mean, um, the last two went to penalties, and this one then Liverpool won on extra times. So Liverpool won the last three, I think. Uh, there were like there were a lot of incidents. I mean, Chelsea had a goal chalked off. Liverpool had a goal chalked off. Liverpool lost lost um, another player to a long grown injury list. Um, and Dan tells me today that Endo has also and also got injured during the game yesterday. So himself and Gavin Burke both Gavin left. Burke, the, yeah. Gavin Burch both left the stadium yesterday in boots and crutches. So I mean, I've never, I've honestly got, I've over the years like there's been bad injury lists, but this is ridiculous now at this stage. Just like literally everybody apart from who, Kanate, Van Dyke, Robertson. I mean, everyone else is kind of banged up, and you know it's crazy stuff. But Kieran, did you get to watch the match yesterday? Yeah, I watched. Uh, didn't sit down and watch the whole thing from start to finish, but I kind of flicked in and out of it and. Uh... Yeah, it's just as well that Liverpool bought so many midfielders during the during the summer because they needed a lot of them and they had to to raid the academy too. Although I would um throw some doubt on how injured uh, Nunes was and the way he sprinted down at the final whistle and hopped that fence like yeah, a guy who uh, had a loaf of bread in his arm running away from the cops. <laughs> he was like he was like um, something you'd seen going up the last furlong in Cheltenham there the way he cleared the fence. Yeah, he was advertising horse. Yeah. He nearly bashed fucking poor Curtis Jones out the way, who who was struggling with crutches. Yeah. And I saw in the celebrations after the match as well, uh, Trent as well. Like he's in, he's injured. He's like on crutches. In a knee big, brace. 
big yeah, yeah. knee brace on it as well. I mean, yeah. it's insane. Just on the match itself, Dan, mm. anything stand out for you? Apart from obviously like the heart that you showed to kind of get by. But realistically, Chelsea, I mean, they never would have had a better chance to get a trophy and this mm. was to kind of put a lot of put a lot of um a lot of uh people who have been given out about them this season just to kind of shut them up for a little bit it would have been a great way for Pochettino to kind of properly get his his tenure started with Chelsea with a trophy but again it just fell to shit for them and the Liverpool kind of you know they call them kids but I mean they were just they were brilliant to watch. It was a brilliant game to watch, a brilliant performance. And Klopp said today, like it's easiest, it's easily his most it's best his best trophy. Yeah, yeah. He said that. Look at it, obviously in, in the aftermath as well of, of it. But I can understand where he's coming from in in that um when you looked at the team lineups, it was kind of clear enough, I think, from earlier in the day that the three lads, three lads of Oslai, Nunes and Salah weren't going to make it. Um, so when you looked at it, it was a it was a weakened side anyway, but it was a really defeated side when you take them goals out of the team as well and creativity. So, you know, I was nervous going into it when I see when I seen the lineups. I kind of really predicted what the lineup would be near enough, you know, because it was nearly what was left. It was all that was left to, to kind of play. Um, yeah, there's nobody fucking. Left <laughs> yeah, there. yeah, yeah. No, it was, and he did say it during the week. I, the writing kind of seemed to be on the wall. They didn't make the Luton game, and he was very coy about it. He, you know, about it. It, it was more than what people thought, you know, about that, oh, he might be saving them for the final. But he was very coy around it in all his press conferences in at the, around the Luton match and also in after. Like, he was kind of saying, I don't know what sort of team we can put out on Sunday. Um, But, like, yeah, look, I, I say it was the greatest, I think, it's maybe a small bit far-fetched given the, yeah. the the Champions League thing. Like, he did say during the week as well that the, the Luton result was like, uh, he used the Barcelona team talk. It was like, just, yeah, yeah, you know, yeah. so I kind of think at the moment it's just he's doing whatever the fuck he can to try and get a lift out of the yeah, players yeah. because it's very, very easy for, you know, even to take, for example, Man United at the weekend and Ireland's out and then suddenly the wheels seem to come off. It's like, it's very easy for sides and a few big players are out though to kind of... um kind of go to it in go within themselves and kind of to I suppose maybe hide away from things but it's definitely not the way Liverpool have, have handled it and the way Klopp's handled it and look it was amazing yeah it I mean, was really the, the highlight of the game for me was not so much well I was very impressed to see Klopp's kids you know, running amok against all the what the guy never called them the entitled billionaires or something like the, that. the billionaire the, the, the blue billionaire, billionaire bottle jobs billionaire bottle jobs yeah <laughs> He's worth the salary alone for saying that. No, but the the most impressive thing I I enjoyed about the game was Cleveland Keller's performance. I thought unbelievable. Well, and yeah. I didn't have the the energy within me yesterday afternoon to to do the Google, but I would love to do the trivia search to find out the last time that there was two Irish men starting for Liverpool. Now, mm. one's currently Northern Irish, granted, yeah, yeah. Gaelic for Ty- in Tyrone at one stage, so we'll claim them to that extent. What's when the last time two Irish players started in the starting eleven? For, for Liverpool, but um, Keller played so well, he made some really key oh saves. Oh my god, and did you see the, the save quickly, from yeah. um, Cole Palmer's effort? Like yeah. in the first, I mean, that, that was, was a ridiculous. close range one, it's as yeah. good as you get, like it's world class. <laughs> Just actually on that, like I seen today as well, he's 25, mm. and I mean, Allison's not going anywhere, you know, soon. So, I mean, is it time for him to look elsewhere because he's too full, he's too good to be a substitute goalkeeper. Is it? Yeah, this this conversation has been on for about three years, though. You know, around him, and you know, there's been links that when Spurs were looking for a goalkeeper during the summer, there was talk about whether or not he would go there. But like, you know, Klopp is calling the best number two in the world, and I know yeah. um, when he, he he is like he's amazingly calm for a player kind of coming in. You know, there's not there's nothing really erratic about him. I do feel at times though, it's amazing he looks still a bit small in nets when you just when you compare him to Allison. But like, there's no doubt that. Um, like he's won us, he's won, he's won us trophies. Yeah, yeah. Um, and if he, even if Alisson was fit though, he would have started the yeah. the the Carabao Cup final. But like, I, I'm literally in the sense of that he would start in goals for an awful lot of Premier League. Club. Of course he would. And, but, that's but, my but that's seems, my point. Like, does he yeah. not for his own career? I get it. He's already at a huge club, so there is the element of kind of look. He's learning from probably the best goalkeeper in the world. But I mean. He's not going to get the regular games that he deserves, and like for his career, like to progress 
he needs those. He needs to be playing week in, week out, and he's not going to get that at Liverpool. So I mean, but, but what when you say career progress, go to like a West a West Ham or go somewhere and not win anything. Go to a go to a go to a club or like where you can kind of show showcase your kind of skills as a goalkeeper, not just in the Carabao or the FA Cup, but like on a weekly basis in the Premier League, because he is good enough to be playing in a top six club without a doubt. Yeah, you know, I get that, but I suppose. So where, what, what club would he go to? Like progress, well, it's progress. You say progress. So for him to progress, he's going to have to go to a club that's in the Champions League and pushing for the Premier League. And other than club to have a good goalkeeper, that not Liverpool are not going to sell them to him. So for him, he's going to have to go to maybe what would you say, like Villa, obviously, we go with Martinez, go with Martinez. I think, like, if you look at it, he'd end up probably playing maybe potentially not in Europe because he does play in a car in the that's playing the Europa uh, League this year for us as well. It's just like when you look at. When you say progress, like fair enough. Obviously, you would imagine every player wants to play every single week. I just think that for him, it would be in some regards a step down because he does get he gets minutes. He doesn't get you know obviously he's not playing every single week. Because Allison's, in my opinion, the best goalkeeper in the world. So uh, he's just unfortunate in that regard that he's there. But like when you say progress, I don't know. I, I think to... right. I'll re rephrase my question, my statement. He deserves to be number one. Simple. Somewhere, yeah, yeah. No, okay, simple okay. as that. I agree with you there. Um, just actually I'll go to Lenny just a quick question Jamie Carragher said that over the weekend Jurgen Klopp hasn't won enough trophies at Liverpool what would you make of that argument Um, I think for given the, the time he's been there at Liverpool eight, and, and how revered he is 8 like, years is it then 9 years 8 eight, years? Nine years yeah like mm-hmm. he's won Champions League won Premier League and then a few Domestic cups, and granted, Liverpool are a huge club, um, and he's took them to the level <clears throat> where where they no one could take them for thirty odd years, being a you know constant title challenger. Still, only have one Premier League and one European Cup, um, so I say Carragher's probably kind of meaning more in, about those trophies. Um, I think he has a point in one sense, but also you have to look at what what he's up against. I know there's obviously Man City they're their own juggernaut in the last 10 years or so and then Chelsea have always been there so I think it's yeah they probably probably definitely should have had one more Premier League maybe and one more yeah I agree with that Um, but again I think at the end of the day football it's it's about you know as Liverpool fans will say I'm not certainly not Liverpool fans but it's about moments, and I say all Liverpool fans that look back this last eight nine years and think it's uh, you know they are they're all obviously devastated. He's born, so I think it's yeah more to it than just trophies. And I, actually, think it's, I think it's slight. I think it's I don't know whether or not you actually said that because like, I haven't seen that. But like even if he did say it, like I think it's slightly it's slightly disingenuous take, if he did say it. Taking out of context, maybe. Well, I, I don't just, know, but I just I just, I, I just think to to like, you can say he might should have won more. Like fair enough, there was. Two seasons there, where the points tallies between City and 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 Liverpool yeah. were very very close, and Liverpool missed out on a couple. Um, but like you, you, you we can sit here all day and pick through it. Like Klopp, Klopp inherited a side that was in a complete and utter mess. Pep Guardiola, on the other hand, didn't. For example, at City, City have also spent an awful lot more money than Liverpool have. Hold on, hold on, hold on, hold on, hold on. So, so no, let me let me finish. So like you, you can kind of you can kind of say like okay, like, if you put it into actual context of what he's what he's he's won the points tallies that he's got in, in fairness the one season which was last season which was a complete disaster really under his reign but the 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 upward trajectory from where Liverpool were when he took over is I don't think anyone can doubt and the way he's actually where he's leaving the club when he leaves is going to be in a massive in, in a much better position than a lot of, a lot of um, other clubs but I just think it's it's a small bit to kind of say like oh he should have won this fair enough like he lost two Champions League finals to Madrid you know that as well. So like it's small, slim, small margins. I think when you when you look at the his his complete yeah. CV at Liverpool. So I think, as I said, the the the, the city and Liverpool kind of comparison. You can sit here and picture it all day. Uh, I know where I stand on it. So. Yeah, there were only two games there from winning the quadruple a couple of years. Ago. Yeah, yeah, yeah. That that uh, was completely. No one has ever come that close. I don't think. Uh, fair point. But, but um, I do get, I do get you in the sense of like it, it's. It's a pity when you look at from Liverpool's perspective that they were so close. There were two Champions League finals. Um, it was, was it two against Madrid yeah. and it failed worldly in one of them. Um, and in the other one, 
one mistake, they were in the game, you know, like there, it is it is fine margins. And then the city thing they've lost, is it twice by a point? Yeah. Getting over 90 points. So like, you know, grand. Like you can say, you, people are obviously going to be entitled to their opinion, but I just think it's a small bit um, harsh if if that's kind of the rhetoric that's going around. But look, I would expect it from um, Man United and Arsenal and City fans to say that. That's okay. Now, also, as well as that, what's he call it? Pearl, Paul Merson said at the weekend he would rather lose Salah than lose Klopp. Would you agree with that one? Yeah, 100%. 100%, 100%. as well, yeah. 100%. No, no doubt in that one. Yeah, yeah. No, player, player, right. players don't. Like, when you look at, like, it's, I think that goes for, for uh, nearly in every situation, I think. There's, there's, when you have top class or the best managers around, you, you know, players um, will come and go. And the best managers usually can find the next one, you know. So I, I, yeah, no, that wouldn't be. Um, I don't think there's anything in that at all. Yeah, yeah. It's interesting okay. that Martin said that he's changed his opinion that he thinks Liverpool are going to win the league. Though, see that? No, I didn't think. see that one actually. No. Yeah, yeah. He's changed his mind and he's gone for Liverpool now. Um, after saying City like all season, he's now just after changing his mind. So. So curiosity, Kieran and Lenny, what's your point? We have a three-way kind of title race. What do you think is going to happen over the next few weeks? Who is going to? Take it in the end, do you think? Being the neutrals. Len, do you want to go first? Yeah, I I genuinely I think it's really opened up again the last week or two. I thought Man City were just about to kick in another gear. Yeah. And I thought Arsenal were maybe reverting to type. And now it's kind of maybe Man City are gonna find it tough and Arsenal have been demolishing teams there for the last few weeks, so um, I, I think it's yeah, it's, we're getting into March now, so I'd say I say probably come back after Easter weekend, and then that's when things will settle out. So there's always you know Easter weekend, there's always games on, go a few games on around that time, and uh, that's really when the kind of fixtures kind of get congested and. Yeah, Teams over who... the over the coming weeks now. So I mean, there's going to be Liverpool and City. Then there's going to be City and Arsenal. Yeah. Um. So again, Mar like the next over the next few weeks, kind of it will tell a lot. Karen, what do you think? Well, you, I was going to ask what head to heads are there left. So if, if City have to play both of them, then that's advantage to Arsenal and Liverpool in that regard. And the fact that uh, at least when we're speaking. Arsenal are still in the Champions League. City are definitely still in the Champions League, but Liverpool don't have that uh, burden in that in that sense. So that's an advantage to Liverpool. Liverpool also have the emotional narrative that that, that Klopp is. I mean, yeah. He's always been the guy for for weaving that kind of narrative to get his players and, and fans on board. But he's really gone from uh, maximum to hyper hyper drive now, and he's kind of tapping everything he can. So I don't know. A couple of things kind of point or maybe suggest toward Liverpool. But the flip side of that then is that. If Klopp uh, is in, and the league is kind of becoming a reality, they've already won the League Cup. Maybe there's an FA Cup. Maybe there's a um, maybe there's these kind of moments. At what stage did then you maybe start talking about? Well, should Klopp go? Will he go? Does he go? Is he definitely going to go? Will is he, there uh, yeah, maybe he, a different conversation? But... Could he could he change his mind? Will he do a Wolf of Wall Street? Go. It, it, <laughs> it, it would be amazing. yeah. It would be amazing. I did kind of cross my mind watching the celebrations at the weekend is to. Is there any way that they could, you know, um, convince them? Yeah, yeah, yeah. Like he seemed to have plenty of fucking energy when he was celebrating. Yesterday, so I mean, there... maybe this is just Klopp's well, master plan, where he has <laughs> pulled the wool over everyone's eyes because this is the only way yeah. by sacrificing himself. It's a bit yeah. like um, it's a bit like Davy in Harry Potter yeah. <laughs> yeah. for everyone else to live. Yeah, so yeah, yeah. Klopp has decided the only way he can get that yeah. extra percentage edge on. The Man City machine and 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 a kind of surging Arsenal is to mm. offer himself up as the sacrificial <laughs> lamb, yeah, to drive and put on to. It would be uh, it the ultimate be, mind game, wouldn't it? The ultimate mind game. It would be brilliant. Like um, I mean, yeah, because the Premier League, you will miss him big time. Um, but I, I don't. I, I, I think like look, it, it's it's fantasy. I, I look, like I was looking at it yesterday. Going to start anyway, just convince him to stay yeah. on for another while. But you see these young players coming through and that as well. Um, I get my just kind of pennies were there uh, just on the, the three kind of way tie. I think that, um, so just to answer Kieran's question, Liverpool have to pay the least amount of the teams in the top eight left, okay. so they, they don't have as many of the clashes that the others have. But like, for what they don't, what they, they do have is um, six of their starting 11 uh, out injured, 
and a few of them seem to be long term. So in my opinion, looking at the team that Liverpool have and the fact that they're the best goalkeeper in the world out potentially to April, uh, the best creative defender, right back, whatever you want to call him, probably creative player, at least in the top two or three, in Trent out to April um as well. He's he's gone, he's goosed. Uh, Jota, who was probably the best player in the league for the last two months, um, gone to probably April. So you look at it going, they're, they're not small injuries. There's a long list of them. There's players to come back. But for me, and I think I said it in the in our WhatsApp group, outside of Leicester, if Liverpool from this position managed to win the Premier League, it'd be the biggest Premier League win um, outside of Leicester that I think there's been. Yeah, that's a fair argument. Um, We'll see. So the rest of the results over the weekend, Arsenal 4, Newcastle uh, 1. As Kieran said, the juggernaut continues to go. Fifth, um, 15 goals in their last three games, something like that. This is ridiculous. Wolves they, are, they're, they are doing well, but like, it, it, <clears throat> it, I thought like, Newcastle were in particular very poor, though. I know Howard got annoyed when they Howard said got it. very annoyed. Yeah. That, that's maybe why he's not here. That's he's on. He's having a less sulk. Yeah. yeah. Um, but like, I just felt that they, they, they like, Burnley, fair enough, are just brutal. Anyone bashes Burnley. Um, I, and I do think they are playing well. Like, they are playing with freedom. They're an awful lot better than they were. I think nearly, I'd say since, yeah, maybe us, or maybe just before that, they kind of really started to kick into gear. But like Newcastle are, like defensively, they were atrociously bad. They couldn't get out of their own box. They were just they couldn't get anything going at all. So and two of the goals were really fucking like ridiculously bad. Own well, one that was an own goal. One of the own goals actually it was two own goals, wasn't there? Dan, the I'm gonna, I'm gonna, I think you should give them just a tiny little bit of credit. I did. So start. I started with it, but I'm saying like you're like I think people are getting a bit over the top about like you know Newcastle that Arsenal played earlier in the season where Howard was on here. Whining about how are you? How... Are you saying that <laughs> Arsenal have been good or their opponents have been bad? That's what you're saying. I, I'm saying what I'm saying now is in regards to Newcastle, for example, the Newcastle that, that, that Arsenal played earlier in the season, a lot of teams played earlier in the season, they're a shell of that now. Like they're really, really bad. I agree um, with that. Yeah, I, I at the West Ham one again, West Ham don't play that badly. Like if they're going through a bad patch, but like. That was a bit ridiculous as well. The Burnley one, everyone pumps Burnley, so we we'll forget about that one. So I'm not. What I'm saying is they're they're playing well. Like it's great for a competition. If your passion teams, of course, are great for a competition. But I just think that to take a small bit of a rain check in on some of the performances that teams have put yeah. in against them, like the West Ham one, you know. Say one nice thing. Yeah. <laughs> one word. And I I can say loads of nice things about Arsenal. One and word. Have, one word to describe them. No, I just say one nice thing about them. One word. At the moment, they're scintillating in the final third. That'll do. All right. Howard, oh, I hope you're enjoying that. <laughs> okay. Aston Villa, four. Not as far as two. Brighton, one. Everton, one. Um, Crystal Palace, three. Burnley, nil. And United, one. Fulham, two. Bournemouth, nil. City, one. Leeds, three. Leicester, one. Lenny, talk to us. <laughs> yeah. Are you... What's he got? I have a question written Speaking down. Speaking of though. juggernauts. <laughs> Honest to God. Do you care about more about catching Leicester or is it all about just automatic promotion? Uh, I think if you were to give me either guaranteed second place or a chance of winning the title, I'd just take the second place. Uh, it's, it's That's what the result is all about, is getting back into the Premier League. Uh, but there's a sniff of it now and I think it will, absolutely, be, very, yeah. there will, it will be very sweet to just lit, win the title. We did win it in 2020, and obviously it was during COVID, and it wasn't really a proper celebration. So I think it would be a bit of poetic justice if we were to get the get the title uh, and have yeah. a proper have a proper big day out and a open what do you call it? Parade. When you were on a few weeks ago, so at the time I think you were in third. Ipswich were above you, less were obviously still leading. So Hampton were above us as well, yeah. So what's happened? Like what has what has we're... improved for Leeds over the last few weeks? Uh, last two months, not, give or take. They, yeah, they just they're just not losing games. They're not conceding many goals, and the other teams are losing games. Has, uh, has it been more Ipswich and Southampton have been going backwards? Yeah, yeah. Southampton were like on a mad streak. I know they've lost three in the last four. Ipswich okay. have been wobbly since Christmas, but they've been kind of just about hanging in there. And Leicester lost two in a row, and we've won nine in a row. Uh, no one has ever won ten. He in won a row. nine in a row. Yeah. First Jesus time Christ. they've done that since before the war. 
And, uh, <laughs> yeah. And no one, no one. Who was over them before the war, Lenny? <laughs> oh, I don't know. I'll have to consult my book, 100 Years Jeez. of Leeds United. <laughs> before the war. Yeah. Fuck's sake. And, um, uh, <laughs> no one has ever done 10 in a row. So all eyes next weekend. Uh, How many points actually between E and third now? Uh, Is there daylight between E and third? No, no, we're, I think we're level on points with Ipswich. Okay. Yeah. So um, realistically, Leicester will be most likely going up. I'd, I'd imagine he'll be going up as well, automatically. Yeah. Out of the remaining, who, who'll who win the playoff, best was on a masking? Who do you think will win the playoff? Who'll even get it? Well, well, who'll be in it? It's four, four, four he's going for, not back. Yeah, four going for two, two automatic places. Um, Leeds and the playoffs don't generally go hand in hand, so oh. I I would, that's why I would avoid at all costs. But nevertheless, I think just last Friday night was just, uh, I think one of Some the best. Comeback, absolutely, was it like they got started to come back in the eighty-eight minute and then three yeah. goals and like amazing. Yeah, it was a real smash and grab. We didn't really deserve to win that. Leicester got a second goal that was disallowed uh, for offside, and it should have been given. Okay. Uh, but I can't remember in a long, long while where we've got a lucky win like that. So we were due one. And uh, yeah, Ellen Road just the roof lifted off it then. And uh, it's yeah. actually a, it's actually a brilliant stadium. I went to a I went to a match versus Tranmere Rovers when you were in the second division many years ago. Oh yeah, the glory days. The fucking the the glory days. But I mean, this place was still packed. Yeah, you know what I mean. Yeah. And it was just. Like they're a proper club and they have a brilliant fan base, and I can't even remember the result on the day, but it's just to kind of see the stadium was bouncing, yeah, and to have I, a team in like the fourth tier at that stage, it was a second division. So I mean, yeah, yeah. I don't is, know. It, is it good crack to go out in Lenny? Leeds is a great city, yeah, yeah it's Leeds a really a great, nice city, yeah, Leeds is a great spot, nice spot. And uh, I don't know if you've seen the clip after the game, but uh, after a full time, they played. Uh, Kaiser Chiefs, I predict I've the right. Yeah, yeah they do that after whenever they have a big win because Kaiser Chiefs are from Leeds. They're yes, that's big right. Leeds fans as well, and uh, they play that after a big win. And uh, there's a good video of just the whole stand just bouncing. And yes. I, even in my own bias view, I was wondering where else would you get that? You do well to see it in many other places. It was just absolutely a, just a just a great night. So. Uh, you never know. That's kind of just one of those big momentum uh, swings. And Leicester, are, Leicester have been really unhappy, even when they were winning games week in week out. The fans aren't happy with the style of football, and they're kind of a bit running out of patience with uh, Enzo Maresca, and he's getting a bit fed up with them. So you wouldn't know. Six points is still a big gap, but it's yeah. 12, 12 but they, games left. But they could, if that's the case, could it be a thing where they could go up and then they could change manager, like even like yeah, maybe something like that, maybe. For it's Leicester, for... Leicester yeah. will go up and they'll bring in Jesse Marsh. Please, oh, please, hopefully, because at least one one less team to worry about then. Yeah, <laughs> I, t- I do. When you look at it though, like you, you would feel that, like so when you look at what happened this year with the teams that come up, you, you'd have a feeling that if Leicester and Leeds go up anyway, I don't know whether or not you're looking at the the table there. Like, there's from ninth, I think, up to sixth. There's only four points in it, so it's hard to okay, know who will be in the okay. playoffs. But like Leicester and Leeds. If they were to go up, do you know what I mean? Like with the pedigree they have, you think they they definitely give it a, a better lash of time to stay in the league than what's happened this year? Like I said, the same about Burnley, Dan, and on on the topic of of Burnley and Sheffield United in particular, uh, at, at this stage, just I've I've stopped caring. I have no more empathy for, for these clubs. <laughs> they just yeah. they run out of road, and it'd be better yeah. for for their own fans' sake and probably for the players and everyone else involved if they, they, they just signed on for the next what two or three months and just forfeited all their games because now they could see the Sheffield United game on Sunday where yeah, they, had, yeah. Uh, they had a, a the two lads. United moment where two of their own players were rowing with each other. Like you know the cart the wheels are coming off the cart when the boys are rip roaring into each other yeah. and they can't even yeah. be united the, the worst against thing. the opposition. Like it's the worst thing well, 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 find the wall and see see what Chris Wilder is saying in those dressing rooms because it is grim in Sheffield United. It's not working, anyways. Absolutely, uh, I think it's brilliant as well. The fact that, like, of all the three teams to come up, it's Luton that are like putting in the, you know, the yeah. proper fight to stay up. And like, I know Everton got uh, four points back today. Mm-hmm. Their reduction went from ten back to six points. So I mean, but of course, there's still the possibility. Uh, did you not hear that, Karen? No, no. 
10 points it was um reduced back to six points so that brings them up oh, to well. fifth brings them up to 15th but of course there's still the possibility that they will get docked more again. points as well like in the coming weeks so again we'll see funny. but it is it is brilliant to see Luton kind of just fighting and they're putting in proper performances as well and I mean yeah and also actually just what we all have vested interest as well at Lone Town over the weekend um Kieran did you get to watch the match no, I didn't because I was um, with the the big bald Andrew Lennon watching him watch Leeds. Um, <laughs> okay, watching okay. him drink pints of water watching Leeds. Uh, <laughs> so no, I didn't see it this year. I watched the uh, last week's game, but uh, yeah. three nil, three nil the first game, three all. They kind of blew a two, blew a three one lead. They're three one off. Two yeah. up at half time, three one, three two, three all. Yeah. Would they be one of the favourites to go up this season? Um, uh, they'd be in. Oh. They'd probably be in the. I don't know what they would be the favorites, yeah. They'd be yeah. in the mix though, because they were they were they were in the playoffs last year. Yeah. Um, so yeah. you'd imagine before, that before they... before yeah. France Perrault up sticks for That's the, right. the yeah. glamour yeah. of Drahada, um, we were <laughs> third favorites in the league, and then we went down to I think we went down to as far as third from bottom. I think only right. 3D United and Kerry FC on odds with Paddy Power were, were worse off than us. Uh, so we were then at 33 to 1, but then uh I, I I did a I did an old trick and I manipulated the markets and uh, after I put on a bet before their first game after the first game their odds had dropped to twenty to one so we're moving up in the world uh, playoffs <laughs> are a bust for Atlone Town this year yeah it's all looking rosy uh, in this okay. one there was uh, some big results in the Premier Division on Friday as well a few shocks uh, uh, Bohemians beaten St Pat's in Inchicore and good. Shelburne yeah. beaten mm. uh, Shamrock Rovers as well. And I think the the League of Ireland as well and truly back a few funny incidents such as uh, a Bose fan throwing a flare at his own player. Okay. And, uh, and then uh, Marcus Poom for Shamrock Rovers uh, having an altercation with a ball boy in Tulka Park. If you recall, uh, Eden Hazard that yeah, night yeah. in the Similar sort of uh, incident. And yeah, there was, uh, as you can imagine, there was very uh, normal and considered reaction to both of those mm. incidents. So, did you um did you hear Damien Duff's interview last weekend? Yeah, it's very good. Calling it the best Great. league in the world. Yeah, no, I fully believe him. I fully agree. Yeah. Unironically, fully yeah. agree. Yeah. Did you see on on Twitter the weekend? Uh, someone watching the Finn Harps and Cork City game couldn't hear the sound on the stream, so they tweeted at Finn Harps, and that led to Finn Harps and Cork City having an argument over Twitter during the game. I mean, where else would you get it? You can't but, write it. Yeah. <clears throat> and uh, of course, we can't say anything about that without mentioning the FAI and how well they are being run at the moment and everything above. Like, the, um, great bunch right. of lads, great bunch of lads, they know exactly what they're doing. Give it to Keen, just get like, let's get on with it now. Just give it to Keen. It's, it's ridiculous. I'm not even gonna can't afford time. him. No, what's he no, called? Like, uh, yeah, yeah, okay, yeah, yeah. yeah. Uh, got, like, uh, you go on, he's getting like a million and a half a year from Sky and. FAI won't be able to pay a third of that, I'd say. So, yeah, he's a lot of bit money for Keane, possibly. Yeah, but I don't know. I just think that, like, they've gone, if, they've, if they've overlooked him and they've gone for uh, the likes of Coleman, um, when Seamus Coleman is saying that he doesn't even want the job, it's a dark day. Chris, Chris Coleman. Coleman, Chris, Chris Coleman, Coleman. Not Seamus. Seamus Coleman, apologies. Although Seamus Coleman would probably be a fucking decent shout there. There's yeah. a five might have just unearthed a gem there. <laughs> Bring back the player manager role. Yeah. <laughs> yeah, Johnny Doyle's job. Absolutely, yeah. yeah. Seamus Coleman as a player manager, why not as a stopgap for the next two or three years? Okay, we'll move on. This segment now, all right, I want, I'm going to enjoy this one. It's our funniest Premier League moments. So I want one moment from each of you, okay, over the years. It can be from a player, a manager, a referee, a pundit, something ridiculous that, like, you've had a great laugh at over the years and something, I suppose, that the listeners will be able to kind of maybe even look at it on YouTube if possible, etc. So, Dan, I'll start with you. Mm. What, um, is your, what is your funniest, most yeah. enjoyable moment? But I kind of had used one of them, I think, on here before, which was the the Peter Oden Winky. Yes. So I, 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 that still would be up there, the other top for me, or even the, the dildo incident with the unplanted deadline day as well. And the pair just gold, but we kind of already covered that. So I had to go think about it. There was a few other ones. There's a few really, like, oh, what would you say, like classic ones that were 
like you know the likes of the Keegan Kevin Keegan rant. There was a few ones. Right like, I will love it. Of, no, I went and saw this. You mentioned it on YouTube. Like, I went onto YouTube actually on YouTube and went through a few of them. And the one that I couldn't stop laughing, I watched it three times. It's the one I'm going to cut. And, I, and it might be the one you have decked there as well. But it was, it was a city player. And it was Adam Ayor, um oh, yeah. when he scored oh, yeah. against Arsenal. I just when I watched a few of them back on YouTube. That one in particular was just yeah. so funny. And then I went and I done a bit of research on what was thrown at him. And it was like it was there was someone threw a plastic chair at him, and someone threw That's a phone right. at him, <laughs> someone threw uh what was there? There was a camera, there was something else. I went, there was a list like about eight different items were fucked at him. Like and it was just so funny, like the emotion. He ran the full length of the pitch and yeah. this big massive knee slide that seemed to go on for like two days. And then he's just there <laughs> and like you can just see these items falling in front of him. Light, it's like a lighter. shower. Huh? It's like a shower. Yeah, Honestly, yeah. God, and yeah. there's like the lighter. And you can, you, there's a really good uh, thing if you go and Google it as well. You can actually get a picture um, of the, the Arsenal fans. In the, it's the Arsenal fans, wasn't it? Yeah, in the UAE. Yeah. And you can see the like the, 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 like, the anger and just the oh, absolute. They're so disgusting. anyway, I, I just, when I looked at a few of them, that one was I thought was really, really funny. And it was just one that I'd forgotten about as well that had happened. Um, I don't know probably, what year that was. It was going you know, to while that, ago that, now. that was that was a great moment. It was probably his best contribution to City, <laughs> just for the just for the enjoyment it gave because he didn't exactly he didn't know a whole lot on the pitch, but that one moment itself, you could see it when he was sprinting, kept oh. going, he kept running, kept running, kept. You running. said both won the cost. <laughs> it was brilliant. Uh, but yeah, hundred percent, definitely. I like that one, especially the items that were thrown out. Plastic chair, like the, yeah, no. the lighters, and and how nothing hit him though. Like not, I don't think I actually got him. Yeah, I know. Um, yeah, funny. Brilliant. Um, Lenny, what was your pick? Yeah, so I was going to do a bit of research on this and, you know, see what was the, the most funny moment because there's a lot of them. But then just something came to the front of my mind and I couldn't get out of my head. And I, I started watching it like, on repeat and couldn't stop laughing. It's yeah. the. Do you ever see the the one where Mick McCarthy is walking out of the tunnel before the game, <laughs> and there's like you know the usual just exchanging pleasantries, and he just turns around, and he just gets a big fright, and there's nothing there the at ghost. all. Yeah, the yeah, ghost, yeah, the ghost, yeah, yeah, the ghost, yeah, yeah. And then oh, <laughs> I just watched that on repeat. Like it doesn't, it doesn't get old at all. Like, no, uh, it's brilliant. There's actually a few ones with Mick McCarthy. Yeah, there's the, yeah, the yeah, other yeah. one where he's the heat. The camera just zooms in on him, and he just kind of gives the look. Uh, yeah. He's like. It's it's a, a, <laughs> And it's like, uh, it's like a dub over. Like it's like a porn star or something. Yeah, like yeah. Like... There's a, it's on loop on YouTube. I think and it's Care to Whisper is being played <laughs> over. Right, yeah. yeah, and it's just, he like raises an eyebrow. and it's. Oh, yeah, 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 yeah. That's very good. Yeah. Um, so... Kieran, what was your one? Um, I've got a few that I I, I, I enjoy. I've got a few personalities. I mean, there's a couple of like managers i won't go into too detail too much detail on them but like people like neil warnock was just so were so enjoyable or gordon strachan um mm. part chancer part you know old school but very much enjoyable but really for the headers the, though their head balls like oh, yeah. Fucking nuts. Yeah. yeah neil warnock's yeah. now still plying his trade up up yeah. up, up north up north uh, Aberdeen, yeah. and as far as i know he hasn't won a game yet um right no, but my favorite moment is um, I'm always one who's who has goalkeepers at the front of my mind. Uh, as as I said on this podcast before, a proud card carrying member, as is Len of the goalkeepers union. But I'm uh, gonna. You were, you were a goalie, <laughs> Len. I was indeed. Yeah. For what club? I was with Saint Wait. Francis, yeah. and then uh, I took a year or two hiatus, and then I made the big move across the Shannon to Hudson Bay. For a See, Hudson years. Bay. Yeah. No way. Not, what, not. Age, what, what age group did you play? I was a year below Kieran. So I was like under 14, under 15. And Kieran, you would always been the age group above. Yeah. Um, yeah. So I had a couple of seasons there. Not very successful. I was at that period where you were moving from the small pitch then to the full size goals and pitch. And I, uh, I hadn't grown into that uh, goals by that stage. So. Yeah, it was. Uh, oh, when when you were at a uh, Hudson Bay Celtic, like, did you ever hear about Declan O'Connor being Mister Hudson Bay? Like, you know. <laughs> well, I re- I remember like going into the dressing room on the first day, and then just seeing like all the framed photos of uh, you yeah. and the statue as well in the lobby. You know, fucking beautiful. Yeah, uh, miracle, yeah. miracle by the Hudson. Yeah. <laughs> did they did they tell you then about the time that Declan O'Connor signed for Willow Park? I did, did not. not. No. 
Yeah, well, we'll move on. Karen, <laughs> what, um, oh. Karen, what was your funniest moment? So anyways, yeah, my long interlude to my to my moment. It involves goalkeepers, basically, and all goalkeepers with uh, who played for the same club at one time or another. Um, so I'll, I'll say a couple of names, and I'll see if you can actually guess uh, the moments. <clears throat> now, this one didn't happen whilst he was with Man United, but Mark Bosnich uh, is, is, is just an enjoyable keeper. And for when he... Any guesses on what I might what I might bring up? Not yet. I have a slight idea. Like he had a few bloopers in goal, big time. But no, bloopers. he didn't. No, he he said something very controversial, didn't he? Or he, well, he did, did something some... very controversial, Declan. He go on, he, go on. He inhaled some cocaine for a long time. <laughs> did he? Oh, I think he yeah, had like a, right. a yeah, five thousand yeah, pound yeah. a week cocaine addiction. Now, obviously, right. he's an addict and he has his own issues. But it, it was, it was I was thinking about on the yeah, yeah, I... I was trying to think of on the field and you're on the stage. Yeah, fair, field. fair. That's, I think, oh, yeah, I went with the most abstract one to begin with. <laughs> yeah. uh, and then the next guy, guy I'll say is uh, Roy Carroll. And does anyone in England? Oh, I think it's Spurs. Spur when he got that. lobbed from 70 yeah. Earths. And, By and, who? Who was it? Oh, uh, go on. Was it Carrick? No, it wasn't Carrick, no. Steve Malbronk, was it? Pedro Mendes. No, no, it was United, was it? Was it oh, Pedro no. Pedro Mendes. Wow. Was, it, was, it not, was it not one United? For, oh, no, that's for no. Is yeah, Pedro yeah. Mendes the lad that play, he played with Portsmouth That's... and he got knocked out by Ben Thatcher? Ben Thatcher nearly mm-hmm. killed him, yeah. And he killed him, yeah. I remember yeah. that. that Carroll's Carl the United keeper, wasn't he? Yeah. He was for a short Carl's time, yeah. Yeah, 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 yeah. And, and when the last guy, and you, I, I think this guy needs no introduction, it was Massimo Taibi. Oh, yeah. His, oh, yeah. his career was yeah. ruined in one game. Yeah. Uh, <laughs> those those tracksuit bottoms alone, I think, ruined him. Yeah, yeah. yeah. Yeah, you don't see them anymore, do you? Remember, they used to see keepers wearing like long trousers, old mm. school, like, like goalie bottoms. They weren't normal they're, tracksuit bottoms. Yeah, they were very padded. But now, just players like Allison wears skins sometimes. Now they just wear yeah. the, the tights. Yeah. Was there a lad? Was he the Palace goalie? Or who's goalie? Was he, was he Corrali? Oh, uh, Corrali? Corrali. Corrali. Julian he just Corrali. wore sweats. He used to wear grey sweatpants. Yeah. Was there a Corrali that was well? They used to wear some sort of pants. No. There was the Hungarian keeper. Yeah, I feel Hungarian. like Hungarian. Yeah. 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 Very yeah. good now. What happened to our game? Bring them back. Yeah. Oh, that's a god. We Give used us to our, be a country. Give us our game back. All right. Yeah. And my funniest, uh, funniest Premier League moment, it involves a pundit. And it was um, in the last few years as well. I just found it absolutely hilarious and how the hell he managed to hang on to his job after doing it. Harriger. So, Carragher, Jamie fucking Carragher, right? Man United beat Liverpool 2 1. Carragher's back down the motorway. Stops the traffic lights, and he's been videoed by this fan. It was a 14 year old girl I was only reading about today. And out of nowhere, like you all know the story, like he just fucking spits straight at her, caught on camera, uploaded, uploaded online. He gets suspended by Sky Sports, but I mean, gee, how he managed to keep his job after doing something like that, given the cancel culture that we are currently living in, that Very wasn't true. ten. That wasn't ten years ago. That was was it twenty? I don't know. It was literally, only sixteen or something was it? I, I, I think it was even more more Recent, current yeah. than that. Two thousand eighteen, I think, if I read it correctly today. But I mean, given the culture that we live in today, where literally, if you say the wrong thing, you're gone, you're done. He spat and he got caught spitting at a woman, at a girl. And I mean, it was up, uploaded to the internet and he managed to hang on to his job and he had Gary Neville kind of pleading his case as well. And, and as well as that, I read today and I seen today that himself and Neville did an interview where Gary Neville was kind of talking to him and asking him about what was going on in his life when he done when he did this. And he was trying to kind of explain he was going through difficult times, etc. And it was a moment of madness. But I mean, Jesus Christ. He spat at a fan and he got a spat at a child and got mm-hmm. caught doing it online. It was uploaded online and how he managed to kind of keep his job. It's a funny thing, but it's also just, you know, ridiculous. Dan, what did you think of that after it happened? Yeah, no, very surprised that he kept his job. Yeah. And I, I, I think I brought, I brought it here to the podcast. So I'll give you a go on that. On Sick to Football, the, the, the podcast that he does with um, Neville and Keane and Wright. Uh, they were talking about Ma- Marcus Rashford's behaviour and he had a big lot to say about Rashford's really? behaviour and in the nightclubs and I seen loads of comments underneath were just been like on the <laughs> kettle there like yeah, yeah absolutely yeah. I um, have one moment as well that was I was going to have in my back pocket in case anyone thought of mine deck uh, I think I sent it to you recently Kieran. do you ever see uh, someone uh, it was 
Sylvester Stallone was at Goodison Park. Oh, uh, yeah. He's a he's a Everton fan, and someone gave him a cup of Bovril, and he takes a taste of it, and the face he makes after he has the taste of it is, uh, yeah. yeah. Uh, uh, someone, someone. I think Kieran sent it. Did you send it to me? And I, I opened. You, yeah. yeah, I opened it in the office at work, and I literally piss myself laughing. <laughs> yeah, like, right. No, I couldn't hold it in. Like it was brilliant. So I'll, I'll send you the. I'll send you the tweet. You can throw it up on the on the I, social. Yeah. Practice. What do you call it? I actually remember as well. I, I looked up today, Dan, the funniest moments in Premier League history. What really? do you think? What do you think number one was? One. The funniest moment again, voted by whomever. But the funniest moment number one. Probably. Uh, can't no one can't know. No, that's not really. Was that in the list? No. Can't a king no. kung fu kick. No. no, that was a cup match as well. Oh, oh sorry, it was. Yeah, uh, let me see now. I'm asking you obviously because it's very relevant to Liverpool. Oh, oh no. was it no, Fowler? No. Fowler? Fowler's no, uh, Phil Bab. Karen, you know where, where I'm going with this? Suarez, oh, Suarez, maybe no, uh, there's, no. Uh, there's only one moment. Oh, the dryer slip. Yeah, there you go. Oh, yeah. yeah. <laughs> I, got there. I got there eventually. The okay, funniest eventually. moment. I mean, again, I know we've mentioned it before, but again, like it just the whole fact that he had mentioned, like, we yeah, will not yeah, let yeah, this yeah. slip. And then he went and slipped and handed it to Manchester City. So thank you very much for uh, all that, man. Um, what do you call it? We'll move on to fantasy football. Dan, am I of the understanding that Howard has finally overtaken you? Howard has. How- Howard has. Used his wild card uh, at the weekend, so okay. he. I know you'll get the table up here now. He, uh, yeah, he used his wild card, and I had to take a minus eight hit. I didn't use my wild card, so he has overtaken me by what's he five points clear of me now. Um, in ninth, he's up to Howard's up to ninth. Really? Yeah, yeah. I'm in, still in eleventh there, just sitting in eleventh place. Um, but yeah, he's moved up. But as I said to him on the podcast at the weekend, um. He was too happy with it. I actually think his wild card has made his team worse. He okay. took Watkins out of his team at the weekend, um, which God knows why he done that. And he also decided to play a player called Archer for Sheffield United, who was had a was a doubt of playing and managed to put him in his team. So actually didn't even start the game with eleven players, and then didn't even put a player on his bench that would come in after using his wild card. So um, I'm just nitpicking at him here a bit, but uh, we we decided to settle this um, ongoing yeah, feud. Uh, with uh, that the whoever finishes a, a below the other will buy the other dinner and has to wear a a, a women's wedding hat <laughs> as a forfeit indeed. So oh, Howard, you... Howard, I just want to let you know you're if you're I'm sure you're going to be listening in. I have no doubts in my mind whatsoever after seeing that sort of shite that you pulled there with your wild card that in even next weekend I'd probably be back ahead of you. Fair enough. Who's who's leading at this week? Oh, sorry, yeah. <laughs> Us losers down there, ninth and eleventh, is <laughs> rotten away. Like, <laughs> so um, yeah, Andrew Curley is has got a nice little march there now in the field. He's on sixteen hundred points, and uh, he is leading the way there. Curly Whirlies and uh, Paul Breslin is thirty two points behind him at the moment. There is a game tonight now. Uh, West Ham are playing Brentford, yeah. So uh, could get into small bit. My brother actually had a, a really big week. He Douglas Louise, who's a bit of a differential. Not too many have him. So he um he done the business for him and got him fifteen points, which was a big kind of a pull. And he actually has Castania as well, who got um an assist uh, at Old Trafford. So he's on seventy three points, and he still has Bowen to play tonight. So he okay. he could be up to third um as well. And that's kind of tight enough. But I mean, Seven Howard and Fairness have kind of tipped away at the ones that are ahead of us. Like we're only now uh like we're about what forty five points. Oh, uh, say between like eleventh and fourth, like you know, just like okay, fair little, enough. Like, really limit. Um, and yeah, I set up my wild card to play there as well. I'm waiting to see what state Liverpool Football Club is going to be in before I play it. Um, so I'm holding out to see what Salah's story is, what's Nunes' story, and um, okay. yeah, but that's the table there at the moment. Yeah, and it's um, sort of still a a way, a way to go. But Andrew Curley definitely has um, he's had a very consistent uh last month or two there now, and he's he's leading the way. Jamie Am I right? Andy. You know him? Again? Yeah, oh, yeah, yeah. Both the lads, both the lads, and him. Yeah. Okay. So he's looking he... forward to the jersey. Is yeah, he sound? he's an Arsenal fan, isn't he? he ah, he's he a good lad. Good. He's a good lad. Yeah. I know. He's an Arsenal fan, isn't he? He is. Yeah. 
Okay, fair enough. And again, like the winner obviously will be the winner of a um club jersey of their choice. So if it's Andy, he'll be getting an Arsenal jersey. Um all right, we'll move on so to the weekend predictions. So before we go into this, I have to mention Daniel's brother Alex and another lad from Adelaide called Owen Flaherty, who both came within one goal of winning the match tickets at the weekend. So I mean, um yeah, it was very, very close and fair play to them, but um They didn't do it. I was. Starting, he's starting to sweat. Yeah. He's starting to sweat. I, I was. Um. What do you call it? Owen Flaherty messaged me on Saturday night after Arsenal won four one and Burnley lost mm -hmm. to Crystal Palace three 0 All he needed was for Chelsea to beat Liverpool two one, and I was thinking, okay, that's definitely it could easily happen. So I was a little bit kind of wondering there. It didn't happen. Liverpool won, but Alex Daniel's brother had Liverpool to win one nil. Palace to beat Burnley 3-0 and Arsenal to beat Newcastle 3-1. So one goal. One wow. goal and mm -hmm. he would have and, been off to... And uh, I would have been so beautiful because he would have brought me for the start and then also with the Liverpool tickets, they're impossible to get. Like, Beck would have got fleeced on the, on the black market <laughs> for two minutes. And I would have loved it. I would have loved it. I would have fucking loved it if we had a guy. <laughs> yeah, but... um. As I've said many times, he can do it once. He can get two games. He can't get three games. It's just not possible, you know. But again, they will, people will keep trying. Um, so do please send your predictions into us by Friday at 10 p.m. The games we have this week, uh, Luton versus Villa, Burnley versus Bournemouth, and Man City versus Man United. That's always a good one. So I'll start with Dan, Luton versus Villa. Um. I will go for or the Luton are playing the cup, aren't they during the week as well? Yeah, uh, Luton, um, Luton have City tomorrow City. night. Yeah, um, I'll go for Villa. Villa, no, Villa are out, aren't they? So I'll go for Villa to win three one. Okay, three one. To uh, Karen. Um, I, I, I'm, I'm rooting for L Luton, so I'm gonna say a one one draw. You're rooting for them, so you give them a draw. Okay. <laughs> <laughs> what do you call it, Lenny? Luton and Villa. Uh, I'm going to go 2-0 to Villa. Really? Okay. Um, Burnley and Bournemouth. Lenny will stick with you for this one. Uh, I'm going to go 3-0 to Bournemouth. Bournemouth aren't a bad team, I'll tell you. No, they're not. At the weekend, they give City a good scare. Cairn, Burnley and Bournemouth. Um, uh, 1-0 Bournemouth. 1-0 Bournemouth. Or a Vinny company. Uh, Dan, Burnley and Bournemouth. I see, lads, I don't know if you've noticed, but I can see that these um, matches that he's picking have got dirtier. <laughs> he's picking more filthier ones, like Burnley, Bournemouth, like that is utter filth. He's got his hand on the scale here. Yeah, 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 yeah. Um, Look, it doesn't matter. I could pick, like, define an easy game. How the fuck do you pick yeah, an easy game well, to predict? Well, like, that's the... Burnley and Bournemouth, like it's just it's it's. I actually the stuff there. How, how I picked these three games. These, as far as I can remember, are the three games that are on TV over next oh, weekend. Okay. So at least people can watch as they see if their predictions come in. Um, anyway, I'll I'll go two one Bournemouth. Two one Bournemouth. Okay, now on to the big one. Cairn, City and Man United. Your brother and your father. Who are you gonna go with? <laughs> Uh, in in the city of Manchester, in the Etihad, in the Etihad, yeah. Um, uh, who do I go for here? I suppose I, it's City, so I'll say Asher 3 0. I love a bit of misery for United, so <laughs> come on. And uh, Dan, um, I will go 2 0 City, okay. And finally, Lenny. Uh, I smell the Norwich scarves coming out again. I think it's going to be uh, 2 1 to Man City. 2 1. Okay. I was actually like, United were on a great run, and I was a little bit worried about this game, but then they did what they did against Fulham at the weekend. So I'm not as, yeah. not as worried. It'll still be tough, but like I'm not as worried now as well. Yeah. So, as always, um, listeners and those watching so you can send in your three predictions to us um by friday at 10 p.m and if you are able to predict three results three correct results you will be winning three two match tickets to a premier league team of your choice 
Karen, keep laughing at me. <laughs> As I said, I, I, I smell a ruse here. So, <laughs> someone's going to get in, Karen, aren't they? They are. I mean, yeah. like, mm. would it just be beautiful if it was like last day of the season, Liverpool win the league and cost City the, and then somebody actually got the last three predictions right or something like any. You just nailed in. He's going to have to get someone tickets like for next season or something. I just say, do you, you just want something new for like that to happen? It would be, it would be funny as hell, a hell like that. And my wife <laughs> would kill me if it does happen. <laughs> but anyways, um, all right, that is us for this week. Oh, sorry, last man standing from Unstand United. Um, I had to buy back. What do you call it? Because <laughs> I went out in the first week. But um, get your predictions in for next weekend's game. The Percent, I think 90 people went out last week, but there's like 300 and something in it. So I'd I would, imagine that um, bought back, though. I'd imagine I'd say I won't know now um, until um, yeah, they yeah. Post, the post results tomorrow. Who are you going to go for, Deck? Actually, who who, we, uh, who did you line up for? for I, week haven't, two? I haven't picked anyone for week two. Yeah, I'm kind of fucking terrified to pick on you because I have an awful, awful kind of um. You were going to pick Everton. That would have been hilarious. Remember that? You were going to look for redemption. It's, yeah, they screwed me over the last time. So I, <laughs> yeah. I don't think I'll go You were going to, to pick them, weren't you? you, were go, you I were was going, going to, to, but like... Against I, Palace. Yeah, but I'm kind of terrified to pick Everton now at this stage. I'll see. I will let you know who I pick. Um, yeah. Right, man. We will leave it there. Um, any other business to discuss? Lenny, good to be back on as always. Yeah, great to be back on, especially after a result like that. So Indeed. Kieran. Any other business? Nothing for one sec. No, I'm keeping quiet. Good stuff. Dan, you're good. Yeah, I just funny an email just popped up on my screen to say that the pre-sale for the FAI season tickets for the for the Republic of Ireland games is sold out and that they're on general general sale tomorrow. So it just goes to show you that there's still an appetite there for people to go to who, the Viva to support Ireland. So. Who are the matches against? Well, no, I think it's the season ticket, so basically it's like for the year. Like, remember Howard had them? Oh, season yeah, yeah, yeah. So yeah. They, they, they must have went, I must have um, just registered to a thing because it, it's an email pop up there saying the pre-sale was, out, was today and they sold out of the pre-sale. They're on general sale tomorrow, so. Like, yeah. uh, do you have any interest in the Irish national team at the moment, international I, team? I, I'd like to go to the Ireland-England game. I think it'd be a bit crack. Uh, they're in them in the Nations League and I have no time for the Nations League. But I've seen that the have them in their group I just think it'd be it'd be good crack to go to that game um, but Kieran no and, no would be the answer no no, no would be the answer Kieran and Lenny do you have any interest in the Irish international team at the moment oh yeah loads yeah yeah, yeah. you do yeah yeah. and like not very suppose, good but that's not that's another situation no 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 I'm just curious they have some good young players good. though it's just, I, need, I need to get the manager sorted like, like yeah. Ben, it was unbelievable against, uh, yeah. against us in both games he's playing this like he's, he's doing really well Ferguson, they've got there as well. Like we, we're crying out for a striker. So there is some young players there. In fairness, Stephen Kenny is on the blood of a lot of them as well. It's one they will give him credit for. But if they need kind of manager, this is a shambles. Like it's just it is sorted. It really, yeah. really is. I mean, it should have been sorted like a long time ago. I mean, there's an international. You were saying only there's an international break coming up, isn't there? Yeah, two, two weeks. weeks. Two weeks. Yeah. Ago. Right. Okay, we will leave it there, lads. Thank you very much as always. Um. We'll be talking to you. Listen, have a good week, okay? Cheers, Zach. Thanks, Zach. Cheers, guys.